Hi, I was working with a client yesterday on designing her investment offering and we put together a model which is not super uncommon. A lot of my clients end up choosing this model and I just thought it might be helpful to share about it. So let's say you have a company that um, has some real potential to grow and to be profitable and successful over time. And you may want to eventually sell the company. Um, and you think, you know, I might be able to sell it for a pretty good price because it has a lot of potential and I don't want to run it forever. So, you know, I'd like to sell it in maybe eight years, 10 years. Um, but I don't want to be on that venture capital path because if you're on the venture capital path, the growth imperative is so great. You have to grow so fast in a way that's really unsustainable for most businesses. And you often have to compromise on things that are really important to you in the name of growth. You know, it's growth at any cost. So what can you do to off, what can you offer to investors that doesn't put you on that path but still can pay a good return to your investors and won't um, have your investors pressuring you to sell as quickly as possible at as high a value as possible. So what we set up in these kinds of situations is something where we pay, the company will pay a target dividend, um, a preferred dividend, and then there will also be a liquidation preference. So in the case of the client I was just working with yesterday, um, you know, it looks like she should be able to pay a 9% target dividend. And so what that means, and it's not that it's going to happen right away, but, you know, in a few years when the company is profitable and starting to kind of take off in terms of profitability, um, she'll be able to pay out pro rata to her equity investors 9% of the amount that they invested. Um, so for example, like if you raise, um, a million dollars from investors, you would be paying out $90,000 a year, uh, as a target dividend. You don't have to pay it. If you end up having a year where that just doesn't make sense to pay it, or maybe it makes sense to pay half of that, that's completely fine. But it's a preferred dividend in the sense that she, as the founder who has common stock, cannot take out profit uh, dividends for herself unless she pays the target dividend to her equity investor. So it's kind of just a way for the equity investors to have some protection that um, the founder won't pull out profits um, without them making their dividend. So there's like an annual dividend. So we estimated, you know, maybe you'll pay the annual dividend. She wants to pay a 9% a year, it could be more, it could be less. Um, so that's the target annual dividend. You'll pay it every year, probably not in the first few years, but maybe starting in year three or four. And then maybe in year eight or nine, you will look at selling the company, but you won't sell to the highest bidder necessarily. You'll only sell to a buyer that is values aligned, you know, that will continue the you know the goals and mission of the company. So you may not be you may not maximize returns, but you'll get a nice chunk of change for selling the company. And when that happens, the preferred shareholders get a liquidation preference. Um, we usually do it as a 1x liquidation preference, which means that any money that comes out of the sale first goes back to the investors at one time their investment. So again, like if you raised a million dollars, a million dollars would come off the top and be paid out pro rata to the investors. And then everything on top of that gets shared pro rata with the founder who has common stock and any other common shareholders included in that. So, and of course, um, it's up to the founder to set the valuation of the company and that's gonna determine the percentage um, ownership that the founder has compared to the investors, which will affect the percentage of the uh, proceeds of the sale that the founder gets. So the higher the valuation you set, the higher a percentage ownership of your company you'll have and the bigger chunk of money you'll get when the company is sold. Um, and that's really just up to you to decide. And keep in mind that with these target dividends, 
that is that will not affect your the valuation will not affect how much of a, the target dividend is paid because um, it the target dividend is a percentage of the amount invested it's not uh, influenced by the valuation of the company so this is a really nice model because it can result in a nice payout for the investors um, where they're not just waiting on the exit you know the sale of the company to get paid they're sharing in the profits every year in the form of a target dividend if things are going well um, and then they also get their liquidation preference when the company is sold. So this is a good model. It's fairly simple. Also, another piece is you don't have to give any voting rights to the investors. So in 99% of the cases that I work on, there's no voting rights associated with that preferred stock. So I hope this is helpful. Not all investors are going to like this. An investor who's very used to the venture capital model is going to say, no, you shouldn't pay out dividends because you need to invest all your profits back into growth. But um, if you're wanting to grow in a more like healthy, steady pace instead of like exponential growth at all costs, you're probably going to be able to pay out those dividends without and still have money left to invest in the growth of the company. So don't be surprised if you're talking to a, a, a kind of an, a mainstream angel or VC and they think this is crazy. There's plenty of other investors that will be open to this. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.